um, these videos clips um, we will call diseases too um, about five years ago whenever it was we recorded a bunch of diseases on my camera um, and those that was done at a garden center so during one of those apple day events and um, that was so that must have been done October November time now it's in the middle of July so we're now showing you some diseases that I've grown myself quite skillfully um, in the middle of July uh, I'm just really I want to talk really about identifying them because once you know what they are then, then you stop making me laugh. Once you know what they are, then you can Google them and um, sort things out. So this is a grapevine, isn't it? This this is um, one a, a, a Welsh grape from the Glencliffe on Estate. It's a cracking grape, but I've got problems with it. As you can as you can see here, look, lovely clean bark where I've cleaned the bark up. Um, but here. I didn't I omitted to do it to this small branch here and you can see there's all this old um, material old bark on on the vine if we look where I'm pointing now with my knife look at this little bastard that's a scale insect and he or she is sucking hang on Sean is sucking the sap out of my grapes and if we go up see there's one there got him sean got him sean just about got him there um so what i'm doing is squashing them you can see all their guts coming out um they're really horrible things and they can really take over your vine or particularly um Oh, that one was already dead. Um, particularly um, greenhouse crops. Um, I can't remember how they're spread, but you can you, you, uh, you can you can Google all that. That's what they look like. You can see down here. I've put ant killers because ants really um, work symbiotically with them. So I've put this ant powder down, and that will stop the ants running up and down, and um, feeding and helping the um, the scaling so so they're, they're scale insects anyway there you go look at him yeah. okay so you want us to move on okay. so this here is a fan trained cherry a young one uh, this is curryad cher cherry the only Welsh cherry and you can see if we look at the ends here in there Sean see you can see that twisted distorted young leaves and here for example twisted distorted young leaves and that's caused by cherry black fly uh, can you get them Sean yeah. uh, you can see they're biting the midrib of the leaf twisting it up so they can live underneath cherries get all varieties of cherries get it they get it every year so you obviously with just a few leaves you can just squash them you can pick off the leaves and throw them away you can squash the horrible little things or you can spray them easy thing to do there we go so that's cherry black fire this is a uh, pear tree Snowden Queen pear, really good pear, but as you can see here on these lower leaves, can you see them, Sean? Um, they have been massively attacked by vine weevils. You can see where they've had a big chomp all the way around. So, this is vine weevil with a tree like this growing outside in organic conditions. Basically, we don't worry about it, they've gone by now. If you've got vine weevil. In your greenhouse living in your pots they the the 
this is done by the adults, a, wing, a winged adult. If you have vine weevil grubs, which are big, horrible white grubs like that, in, in your pots, in your greenhouse, they will eat the roots of your, of your plants. Really serious problem. Outside here, we don't worry about it. Um, while we're here, on this branch of this tree here, you can see it's it's growing poorly. This this is called rough bark, and you can see it's rough. Um, and it, it's one of these things that pears sometimes get. Um, That's what it says. Yeah, sorry. Um, it, it's a thing that rough bark is a thing that pears sometimes get. No one really knows what the cause of it is, um, and it's you, you, not uncommon. And it, you just get see that one there's got rough bark. Um, I just cut it off and forget about it, uh, like I will do now. Rough bark gone. Rough bark gone. Um, I think it's more of a sort of physiological condition compared with anything else. Okay, Sean, thank you for that. Quick one. Uh, this is a Denby plum tree, really good plum, but you can see for whatever reason it's a bit chlorotic, it's a bit yellow, and that's because it's lacking in iron. So when I get round to it, I will give it a spray, I'll give it a spray of seaweed with collated iron, and that should give it a perk up, or, or I could give it some uh, iron rich food on the floor. But that, that yellowness is typical of a, a lack of iron. If you move over here, this this apple tree, if you look at this Sean, can you, can you see that? This, this is moss. This is moss growing on this tree. There's some here. Oops, you can see it there Sean? Yeah. Dif different moss species plenty in this crutch here. Moss isn't a problem in itself on a tree, but usually you can squeeze it and it's wet. And it's an indication that your growing conditions are damp. And that was caused by all next doors, Dave's trees getting bigger and bigger and bigger, shading mine out. We've pushed next door's trees back now, so it should dry out. Moss isn't a problem in itself, but the wet conditions can cause other diseases. And in this case, it would probably be, be scab on these trees. Um, and scab is mentioned in the previous uh, video. Okay, Sean, thank you. Okay. Can you zoom into that, Sean? Okay, here we have an example of mildew. You can see these deformed leaves and this white powdery coating. That's mildew and all I do, I just cut it off because we don't get mildew very much in North Wales. It's, it tends to be a disease of the warm. Uh, is but, the woolly coating part of the disease? Or is no. Else? Well, spotted Sean. Uh, in here is a new disease to North Wales. Um, it's woolly aphid. You can see here all this wooliness, and in, inside this wooliness, which is actually wax, see it there? Um, are, you can see those horrible little black aphids living there, and you, you would get rid of them by dabbing uh, petrol or turps, chainsaw mix or something, onto the wax and that will dissolve the wax and kill these horrible little aphids. They're, they're a disease of the warm. We don't get it in North Wales or we never used to, but now it's spreading. It's spreading south as, as the climate warms. It's, it's a problem of climate change in North Wales. So that's woolly aphid. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, while we're by this particular tree here, um, this isn't a disease, but we'll show you anyway. These, you can see we want to keep the center of this tree open. And you can see in the past, 
we have been chopping away to get rid of all this stuff because we, we want the centre open. But because we're using secateurs, we've been leaving little stubs. The trouble with that is soon those little stubs will grow more, more, more shoots and you end up with um, a stubby thing like this. It's, if you want to clear the centre of a tree, if you whip them out by pulling and twisting like I'm doing now, um, because the, you almost, you, you're leaving a hole on the tree, almost pulling, pulling these shoots out by the root, if you like, uh, that these holes left will heal over and they won't grow back again. If you cut a small shoot, a water shoot out with your snippers, you're likely to leave a stump and that stump will re-sprout. Um, but that's not a disease, but while we're here, when we go around our orchard, we might be looking for diseases, but we're look, always looking for other things as well. Okay. okay. Um, earlier we looked at moss on the trees and moss in, isn't bad in itself but it's indicative that the, it's all a bit damp and horrible. Here, you can see this tree here, these different coloured patches. This is lichen. Often with an old tree, it will be this colour, light coloured, often quite crusty, um, quite nice patterns on some of it. Well, lichen isn't a problem at all. Lichen is saying that we're lucky, we're living in North Wales, with lovely clean air. If you were living in London, back in the old days anyway, um, with lots of air pollution, there's a lot less lichen there. So that's lichen for you. Um, this is something, again, that isn't a disease, but we're passing through the orchard and I noticed it. Quite often, you'll see a tree, this is June, July, the trees are in, they have flowers on. I don't think anyone knows why it is, or anyone cares why it is. I'm just saying it isn't a problem, it isn't a disease. Uh, just enjoy that little bit of extra blossom. It, it means nothing at all. There we go. Um, with, this, with this tree here, you can see the, the, um, the flowers have died and the trusses have died and the death has spread rapidly down here and here it is here, it is here. Um, this I think is still alive yeah that wood is alive but this wood is very it's, this wood is dead and dying it looks a bit like canker which is on the other video but it's more general it's up the whole thing and this is a really bad disease. This is the worst year I've ever known this disease. Um, and this is called blossom wilt. These blossoms and early trusses have just collapsed and died. Um, it's, called by, it's caused by a fungus called malinia. And it's the same fungus that causes brown rot. Um, in the other video, you saw brown rot on small fruits that they were, they were mummified, they turned to little prunes. Um, this is the same, that, they do that in the autumn, but now in the late spring, the, the same, that same fungus has attacked the, these, these early trusses of leaves and blossom. It's, I have, this, this year is 2000 and 19. 19 and I have never known anything like it in all my 30 or 40 years of growing fruit. I've seen orchards devastated this year. I really don't know why it's gone particularly bad. Um, organically, you orchard hygiene reduces the risk by cutting off anything bad, picking up your mummified fruits and so on. Um, but I've recommended to some people to spray it with a systemic fungicide because it is so bad this year. Why that is, I don't know. So there we are, blossom wilt, also known as brown rot. 
Okay, okay you're right, Sean. Don't fall down the bank. Um, this is an interesting one. This variety of apple, these two, these couple of branches here, a one called Pigaderin, um, a Welsh cider and early eater. Sean is zooming in by walking down the slope. Can you see all this? And can you see up there, Sean? What these things are here, the lower ones, what these things are, are aerial roots. Some varieties of apple tree form these burrs, um, which if they were stuck in, if that piece of wood was stuck in the ground, that would actually form roots. A lot of people find it quite disturbing when they see these, but some varieties form these aerial roots and they're nothing to worry about. Uh, Pigaderin, really good side, well cider apple and early eater is really prone to it. A lot of people ring me up and say, what is this on my trees? So I've just saved you a phone call. Thanks, Sean. So we're now in a polytunnel and you can see these are trees that we grafted in March. And these are all nice, clean, young trees, aren't they? Um, over here, this group of trees um, were ones that we left over from last year. They were little runts mainly, or ones we never sold because they're a bit small. Uh, we plant them in here and you can see they're doing really well. What's this one? Um, this is uh, one called Cry Mochin. Um, here we've got Pigaderin, and these are all doing really nicely. The trouble is though with these ones that were outside last year, they often get eggs laid on them uh, the over winter. And if we, whilst these are lovely and healthy, if we look down here, Sean, look at this poor little thing that's got a bad aphid infection. And those eggs were laid on that tree over winter. If I just take that leaf off, Oops, ready? If we look inside this twisted, deformed leaf, it's full of aphids and ants as well. And look, they, they often call those blue bugs. See, they're all bluey looking aphid. So the aphid have bit the underneath of the leaf and it's twisted up. Um, a common problem. If you look quite often on other leaves, you will see these little white things can you can you zoom into yeah. those sean getting them little white things see them yeah. you see them well you're good um those little white things are called instars they and they are the shed off external coats of the aphid as the aphid gets bigger and bigger because it's got an external exoskeleton like a crab it has to chuck away its old shell, its out, out, out of coating. So quite often, if you're looking at your leaves, you'll see these little white, bit like dandruff. Um, look, there we go. See, they're like little instars, little bits of white. So if we turn the leaf over, we can see there's a massive colony here of aphids, uh, blue bugs. Uh, there we are. And so, Dif difficult to get, best just to pinch them off if you've only got a few. Difficult to spray and for the birds to attack them because they've curled the leaf up. Uh, there we go, Sean, thank you. There's a quick one here, Sean just spotted. Uh, these leaves of this young tree in a pot outside, you can see they're really ragged from the inside out. They're, they've not been nibbled on the edges, but they're just really ragged. And I'm pretty sure that's a thing called capsid bug, which this one, that's a good one there. And I'm sure that's capsid bug. And also these brown discolorations, that's very capsid bug-like. Um, it's a bug, by the time you've seen this, they've, they've gone. I've never seen one in my life. There are problems in a polytunnel, but out, if, if your trees are outside, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, we might go to next doors where I found some capsid bug marks on their young apples. And if you can see, in, in 
that other disease video, I'm pretty sure there's capsid bug marks on, you know, edible fruit, but that's all, they're, they're just, they're marks, they don't actually cause a real problem. Okay, so on that's great.